Hey everyone, Classic TBC's Phase 3 is around the corner, and it will be releasing sooner rather than later. We have no formal release date as of the time of writing this video, but knowing how Blizzard operates, it's likely we'll get a date quite late, like one or two weeks at most before the patch drops. For this reason, I figured now is the perfect time to prepare for Phase 3. We're gonna go over a checklist of all the things you should do before Black Temple, Mount Hyjal, and all the content coming with Phase 3 drops. Some of this is mandatory and some of this is optional, but you need to be aware of everything in advance to take full advantage of the upcoming patch and be one step ahead of everyone else. So today, we're gonna go over 7 things you need to do as soon as possible before phase 3. Let's get into it. First and foremost, probably the most obvious but also most important thing to do before Phase 3 drops is to get attuned to the new raids, Black Temple and Mount Hyjal. Attunements, thankfully, are becoming simpler and simpler to achieve as TBC is growing. In fact, Blizzard removed all previous attunements to any raids, that includes SSC and TK as of this moment. And for the upcoming raids that are yet to release, Zulaman and Sunwell, there will be no attunements at all, so this will be the last attunement you'll have to do. So, getting attuned to Black Temple and Mount Hyjal and receiving the title Hand of a Doll in the process will have you do a bunch of solo and group quests, some dungeons and even some raids. We actually did a video going through all of that process that you should definitely check for more detail, but we'll go over it here quickly for you. So in short, to get attuned to Black Temple, your one seemingly simple objective is to get the Medallion of Karabor. That's the key to enter Black Temple. But before even getting started on that process, I recommend you go right now straight to Tenaris in the Caverns of Time and grab the quest Vitals of Eternity from Sori Dormi, which will ask you to kill Lady Vash and Kel'thas, the last bosses of SSC and TK respectively. But we'll get to that in a second. For now, get that quest in your quest log. The attunement to BT all starts in Shadowmoon Valley, at either the Aldor or Scryer's Camp. You'll be doing quite a few chore quests that will have you collect stuff, kill mobs, talk to NPCs and so on. You'll even be asked to do Architraz at some point, which is really annoying, I hate that dungeon. But after you progress through that questline enough, you'll finally be tasked with talking to Sir Udalu in SSC, an NPC that you can talk to after killing Fathomlord Karathras. And incidentally, if you manage to finish the raid and kill Lady Vash, you'll also be completing half of the Vials of Eternity quest that we talked about earlier. Then you'll be tasked with killing Alar, the first boss of TK, while wearing a disguise, don't forget that. And finally, you'll be tasked with killing the first boss of Mount Hyjal, and that's why I told you to grab the Vials of Eternity quest. Completing that quest gets you attuned to Mount Hyjal. Obviously, Hyjal is not released yet, so if you get to that point, you're done for now. And again, if something I said isn't clear about this whole process, check our attunement guide video for BT and Hyjal, where we go into much more detail. But for now, let's move on to the next important thing to do before Phase 3 drops, and that's to get started on your Netherwing reputation for the famous Nether Drakes, of course. Phase 3 introduces this reputation, and you might be wondering, what is there to be prepared for exactly? Well, actually, the whole first part of this reputation, so the prequests that get you from hated to neutral, have been in the game since the start of Phase 2, and that's exactly what you need to do right now before the masses of people start swarming this place. It starts at Mordenai in Shadowmoon Valley, and it has you do a bunch of simple quests. The last quest, however, is a bit tough. You'll be fighting an elite mob while a bunch of mobs will be shooting you, so you'll definitely need a group of 5 players for that, and I recommend having a tank and a healer with that too. But once you do all of that, you're set. You'll be neutral with Netherwing, and the moment the rep is added in phase 3, you'll be able to start on it right away. Remember, however, you have to have artisan riding to go first. Further. That's the 5000 gold riding skill. Without it, you won't be able to proceed any further than neutral. And once the reputation drops, remember to always stay on the lookout for Netherwing eggs. Those can be turned in repeatedly for 250 rep each time. Again, if you want more details on this process, and if you want to know in advance what you'll need to do for Netherwing once phase 3 drops, you can check our Netherwing guide video where we go into much more detail each step of the way. Alright, moving on, if you've watched our phase 2 preparation guide in the past, you might remember that we talked about resistance gear there, but we left that at the 
SCN because resistance gear in SSC and TK, although important for certain classes on certain bosses, it's not really important for everyone. Well, with Black Temple, it's a completely different story. You'll need a lot of shadow resistance gear, and that's for one reason, Mother Shiraz. Everyone, with the exception of tanks, will need shadow resistance gear on Mother Shiraz, if you want to proceed further into the raid. And that's still true even considering the boss is on the post nerf state, by the way. So why do you need shadow resistance on Mother? Well, there's a ton of abilities that deal shadow damage, but probably the most important one is the beams. Every 9 seconds, a beam hits 10 random raid members, dealing anywhere from 2k to 8k shadow damage and repeating 3 times. So yeah, there's no way around that. If you're not wearing shadow resistance, you'll be dead on the spot. So what's a good amount of resistance to have for Shiraz? Of course, the obvious answer is it depends. It depends on your guild, your healers, and how long the fight will last for. But if you want a number, in my guild we're aiming for around 250 shadow resistance with buffs. Not sure if that's gonna work out for us as Blizzard keeps taking down the PTR, so we didn't get a chance to test the boss yet. But looking at other raids, that should be enough for us at least. So yeah, you need to start farming your shadow resistance gear sooner rather than later. The more you wait, the more anything in relation with shadow resistance will go up in price. If you're looking for a budget way to get enough shadow resistance, here's a reddit post from user 21st gun giving a way to get some without breaking the piggy bank. Link will be in the description. Moving on, let's talk about badges of justice. This currency at this point is a bit useless for you probably, unless you're a a new player or alt of course. But there's a couple reasons why you might want to start doing your heroic dailies again every day. The first reason, and the one that will become true once phase 3 drops, is that Primal Nether will now be sold from the Badge of Justice vendor. That was added in patch 2.1 originally, and as expected, it's added in phase 3 now too. It costs 10 badges to get one Primal Nether, allowing you to create a bunch of valuable items not only for yourself, but also to sell on the auction house, like the leg enchants from Leatherworking for example. And in the future, in phase 5 probably, both Primal Nether and Nether Vortex will become tradable and Nether Vortex will also be added to the Badge of Justice vendor. Then of course, once phase 4 releases with Zulaman, we'll also be getting a bunch of new powerful gear pieces to buy with Badges of Justice, and once phase 5 releases, even more powerful gear pieces. So really, I would start farming badges right away if you can. Just doing your heroic daily every day will make you a ton of badges in preparation for all of phase 3, 4 and 5, and that's definitely what I'll be doing personally. Okay, speaking of gear, let's talk about the most obvious thing you could do to prepare prepare for phase 3. And that's getting gear, obviously. You may or may not know this already, but SSC and Tempest Keep have already been nerfed quite significantly. Not only do they not require any attunement anymore, but all the bosses and trash have had significant nerfs on every front. HP, mechanics, you name it. You can even go straight to Lady Vash or Kel'thas now, which is crazy. Especially when you go quick enough and nuke Solarian or Void Reaver with those legendary weapons from Kel'thas. That's always fun. But yeah, now is the best time than ever to get gear. I personally seen more groups forming for SSC and TK during the last week than I've ever seen since the start of phase 2. With my guild, we've been struggling to clear both raids on one night. Now we're doing that in just over 2 hours, and then even doing gruel splits to finish the night. Kara, Gruul and Mag are also raids that are popping right now, because they still drop strong items and they've been nerfed already before. And of course, I also suspect it's because a lot of people are getting all their alts attuned to BT and Hyjal now that the nerfs allow them to. But yeah, of course, keep in mind this doesn't mean you'll be invited to any raid with any gear. SSC and TK still require a minimum amount of effort and gear to take on, and it's unlikely you'll be invited to most raids unless you already have a minimum amount of tier 4 gear already. Okay, moving on, let's now talk a little bit about PvP. To be honest with you, PvP hasn't been my cup of tea in TBC personally, but the PvP scene is still quite active, as arena gear is still very strong, not only in arena, but also in raids for certain classes. So naturally, a lot of people want their piece of the cake, not to mention the gladiator rewards of course. So with phase 3 comes a new season, season 3, and when you say new season, you also say a complete reset of arena points. What this means in short is that you really need to make sure to spend all your arena points before season 2 
end. Now, we're not sure whether Blizzard will introduce a sort of pre-patch to Phase 3 like they did with Phase 2, where arena gear will be discounted but the arena points not yet reset. In that case, I'd definitely wait. In fact, I would wait with spending any arena points now until Blizzard confirms whether it's going to be a thing or not. But yeah, in short, make sure to not let your arena points go to waste by waiting until they're reset, but also wait before spending them just in case Blizzard discounts the arena gear in advance. And finally, of course, if you're gonna be raiding Black Temple and Hyjal, the best way to prepare for that is to know what to do for those raids in advance. I would have suggested to hop on the PTR and try these bosses yourself to have a feel for them, but Blizzard keeps taking down the PTR for weeks on end, so it's hard to do that at this point, but definitely do it once they go live. Other than that, if you don't want to bother with PTR raiding, we'll also be doing boss guides for Black Temple and Hyjal the way they're gonna go live once Phase 3 drops, which is the post nerf state, so make sure to subscribe to not miss that. Platinum WoW said that he will not be doing those awesome guides anymore, so we'll try our best to take on the torch. And that's pretty much everything there is to know to prepare for phase 3 of Classic TBC. If I'm forgetting something here, please let us know in the comments to benefit your fellow TBC players. But as I said, get attuned, get started on your Netherwing rep, farm some gear with the now easier raids, and of course, just remember to have fun in the process. With that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to give it a like and subscribe to the Classic WoW Curios channel for more content like this. I will see you guys in the next one very soon. Bye for now.